today me and uh, Louis here are going to do a little uh, product review. Okay, it's more me. Louis probably prefers me to pay more attention to him than to my new tools. And in this case, we're talking about the I'm going to talk about the MacBook Air M1. So I got this from a friend of mine who bought one for his company, uh, for a colleague. And in the end, his colleague didn't want it. So I just borrowed it for like three weeks, more out of curiosity and the, to satisfy my shiny new object uh, syndrome. It's the very base model, um, which means it only has eight gigabytes of RAM and 100, 256 it's the very base model which is why i wanted to know if it's actually good enough considering that i have a macbook pro 16 inch from 2019 uh, with 16 gigabytes of ram and obviously with the intel chip inside it's quite a well performing macbook pro i didn't go high end i didn't spec it out when i bought it actually but I, when I bought it, I upgraded from a um, MacBook Pro from 2015, which was probably the nicest MacBook that I will ever own. Or it's just a fond memories of me starting iOS development with that machine. Since I could just use the M1 for some time, I decided to check my if it could actually perform well with my normal workflow, where I use quite a few different applications. It's more... Um, I thought it was probably a restriction for the 8 gigabyte inside. I or, I'm already working with 256 gigabyte, which seriously I, I would definitely upgrade next time, simply because Xcode is just trashing my SSD every time. With 256 gig, you just have to regularly clean your Mac. Something to keep in mind if you want to do this, but it's definitely enough. Um, if you want to make it work, you can make it work. So let's just have a look at what I would usually do on my Mac. I'm not going to show you my work project because um, I don't want to lose that job by showing confidential information. For a normal workflow, you probably need quite a few applications. For me, that would be Slack because I need to answer regularly to some of the questions or I have, if I have a question, I need to be able to actually check what they reply. Then I need a couple of windows. I need a couple of tabs and it just ends up with a lot most of the time. Starting with email, Jira for management, writing and check tickets, something for source control like GitHub or Bitbucket. Then some questions that you have to look for on Stack Overflow. So that's why the six tabs that I currently have open is probably very few for me. <laughs> this is actually not a problem for um, my Intel because it has 16 gigs. The next two would be both Xcode and some source control um, software like GitHub Desktop or um, Source Tree or tower or whatever you prefer and I need to make sure that I don't change any files that I'm not supposed to change. In order to test performance for Xcode I found it more... Xcode just suffers a lot more for storyboards, for large storyboards and in order for you to get a better idea by yourself I choose to download a sample project from Apple, from the Apple developer page which is the project where you can see how to customize the navigation bar so right now I'm here in the main storyboard and you see it's already loading a couple of seconds, which is for this test just good because then I can see if it actually comes faster with the M1 or super slow. Especially with storyboards, I, it makes me anxious if it takes too long to load. I don't know what it is. I guess it's just also the um, hidden possibilities to change something and nobody ever knows. Maybe not, but anyway, so this the storyboard has... see... 10, 12, 15 view controllers inside. Then obviously I need to run a couple of simulators. One problem is that my <laughs> Mac keeps on heating up and the fans spin like crazy in between now. Obviously um, now is a moment where it has to do a lot by building it. So you can just um, look around and I probably 
have more than one simulator simply because I need to test different screen sizes. It's probably not uncommon to have two or three of them open. And in order... <laughs> it actually... Well, uh, it's actually really now getting there because my video was just stuttering. Well, that was the whole point. <laughs> because if I test, if I don't run it in a way that... You okay, the, the video recording I wouldn't normally do. Okay, anyway, so now I have three simulators running. And in order to see the strain, I need to open um, Activity Monitor. So this is um, Activity Monitor. So I only I changed the settings here to see it a little bit more different. So I only have the window processes. I can also choose to see only my processes. Um, but the window process is more interesting because it's the one I can actually change. And you can see what I'm running. Uh, the biggest one here is obviously um, this Xcode. Okay, maybe we start with the CPU. And this was just really high for Xcode. I probably should just start and start the project again. Because this is the one when it spikes up. Especially if I close, um, if I delete the project again and even if you uh, close the simulator. But it's like 8% of the CPU usage, or here 21. So I'm getting to um, some nice usage. Okay, my QuickTime player is actually taking some space. Um, Chrome is not doing too much because it's not active. The memory is interesting in this case because here I have the 16 gig. So I should not max out at all. At least I didn't see anything when I checked regularly recently. So I am here at 10 gigabytes of usage for all of my amazing workflow. I can probably easily get higher than this. And this is getting interesting when we look at the M1 now. From the power, from the energy or energy consumption, there's no way I can use this computer more than three hours without a charger. It's getting down really, really fast. And it's just so hot most of the time. Okay, now that you see how fast this was working. Okay, I'm now on the M1, which you can see because it's in dark mode. That might make some people happy who prefer dark mode. I did. I just didn't change the settings. So this is the same uh, navigation project with... Did I already open three simulators? Um, probably just add one more. One of the funny unexpected um, things when I switched this computer is I always expected to ramp up or to, I got the feedback from this one, from the Intel one. Every time you hear the fans, you know, oh, now it has to actually work and maybe I should just treat it a little bit better, but for this one, and it doesn't have fans. So it never, it's never noisy. I tried it a couple of times to put it on my lap and it never heated up. I mean, it never felt like it's going to burn my legs in comparison to the Intel one. Okay, now this is nicely done. I can also keep on running this and, um, open one of the view controllers, uh, storyboards. And it's actually a, a bit faster because the other one is probably more like a couple of seconds and this is less than two seconds. Um, so it's very responsive um, for going around on the storyboards. And I just have here one Swift UI view. This is hard to compare because it's the first time it builds with the preview, so it always takes forever. Um, sometimes it also depends on the pod file. And Xcode. So again, I'm having here a couple of tabs open, probably more than in the other case. If you get this, I'm actually looking for a new monitor. Probably going to have the same resolution as the screens on this MacBooks, because then it just looks better. Always get higher <laughs> if you can, because otherwise it looks pixelated and bad. Um, so and, and since this computer is a lot less expensive, you definitely have money left for a nicer monitor. Why is it? What did I do? It's probably some stupid thing again. We have again source tree, Slack, QuickTime. Maybe I should quit Visual Studio and notes. Actually, this is finished. What is it doing? So. 
from the CPU, you see here, there's some spikes, but this is normal because it, there should be spikes. If it maxes out, it's actually good because then it takes advantage. You don't want to, it's, you want it to spike, otherwise it's driving a Ferrari always in the second gear. Doesn't really make sense. You always want to uh, max it out as possible. And since I didn't, it's more a question of how laggy feels Xcode with all the other vacations. Maybe if I have too much open. Maybe, oh, maybe I should have done this. It's definitely not. Pretty sure it's not the M1 that is the problem here. Because I've tried this before and there was really no problem at all. But in the meantime, we can have a look at the... So the CPU is pretty fine. I still have here idle 47% probably should just try again running one of the simulators because now you see it going up but it doesn't it doesn't reach the maximum there was still 30 percent left and just have a look i don't feel any lag um because on my intel one in between i do remember maybe it was there but i don't think so uh, my screen recording actually started well, and my fan... Okay, we, I cannot use the fans as a comparison because I don't have fans on this one. Fan? Fans? Fans? Fan. So, but the interesting thing is the memory usage because I said this is only 8 gigabyte, But somehow they managed to optimize this really, really well. You can see here the memory pressure. And somehow it optimized... It was yellow before, which it was a couple of times. But I didn't feel any stutter, it's only yellow, which means I didn't have the maximum. Interesting enough, um, they optimized it in a way that they have here some memory compressed or they used to swap, which means they probably using some of the storage on the SSD. You can also see this if I close some of the simulators. This is then here dropping, but I just have, even if I had three, it was still optimizing in a way it was working. So you might need to pay attention to this a little bit or just, I don't know don't open so many other stuff just need to go back to window processes um because okay i probably should normally i would not have quicktime play open and also the activity monitor that might just give you a little bit more room I can try this again oh, okay it's already there uh, <laughs> i'm always expecting for such a small computer a little bit longer times but it's it's just not that bad. Um, maybe I just have to open as many simulators to see actually the lag. Okay, now it's getting an orange. But even with this, I can still work perfectly fine on Xcode. Okay, this is probably never going to compile for me now. Until I find out what I did wrong. Okay, I said want to add more, so we are at... So I'm starting now the fourth simulator. How many simulator does a girl need? Okay, now we are reaching. Unable to boot device due to insufficient system resources to current system settings are not sufficient to allow booting additional simulators. Okay, fine. I uh, guess I did finish at three of them, but maybe it helps if I uh, quit uh, the activity monitor and maybe the source tree because um, I don't, I cannot stop my screen recording okay i had to close um chrome safari so it's good it's pretty much only you now xcode and the simulators so this is clearly not a good way of using this but i'm not sure how often you want to have more than three simulators this kind of limitations i don't have on the uh, 16 gig ram for the m1 macbook air you can only use one external monitor but if you happen to find a really large monitor, or in this case, I tried a smart TV in my, um, from one of the guys in my co-working space. Although I have to say 50 inch is probably a little bit too much. Too much screen size can be a little bit intimidating, but it's nice because um, you can put the screen also further away. Personally, I think a wider aspect ratio is better because you have oftentimes more than one file open together with the navigation on the left and the inspector on the right it just it's more efficient to have a wider aspect ratio so in this case it doesn't really matter 
too much if you have a very small computer screen. If you have the happen to have the biggest screen in the whole co-working space, it's kind of a compensation. Um, the important thing when I bought the adapter from USB-C to HDMI, I didn't pay attention to the adapters because I was more like, how many ports do I actually want to have? And I didn't notice the, I didn't pay attention to the re refresh rate. So the one that I have only has 30 hertz and you can really see it on the screen. The mouse is just looking a little bit dragging behind. If you get them with 60 hertz, it's actually not so much more expensive. I think mine cost $30 or something in this range from Amazon. I got really used to this kind of adapters. For the MacBook Pro, I have two USB ports on each side. For the Air, you only have it on, on one side. So then it's getting a little bit more critical what you want to have. But even for the newer MacBook Pros who have now built in ports for HDMI and a card reader, micro SD card reader, I still need to have an adapter because I still have quite a lot of things with USB-A. For example, for example, my um, Blue Yeti, my microphone, is a USB-A microphone. And also the um, USB camera that I'm using for recording is a USB camera. <laughs> And there's still the possibility, okay, I don't use it a lot, but the USB stick sometimes is useful. Or if you have a mouse or sometimes different keyboards, you might want to use this. This is the port that I was actually a little bit surprised that I didn't bring this one back. Since I like this adapter and it, I have it for two years, it's basic, it's very stable. I don't like the dog, dongly things. And then the last thing, which is more a general thing for M1 is the compatibility. If you have some software that is not Apple software that you're not sure if it's running fine yet, there's a website, it's appleSiliconReady.com, where you can find a long list of software. They show if it's working on the Rosetta or if it's working natively on the M1 or if it's not working at all. <laughs> So you can check there first if you have something critical. But obviously, if you're just going for iOS development and Xcode, things are working. I had some problems with CocoaPods, but there was a very, very easy fix, which is simply when you install it, you install it with Homebrew. And then it works fine. Also the preview and the simulators on your device. At least the ones that I tried. I'm not sure if all pods work. As a summary of the MacBook Air M1, I actually really like it especially because it's so small and very portable and the battery is amazing. <laughs> Maybe I just want to have more ports, um, just the USB-C on both sides. The keyboard is really nice, <laughs> finally. <laughs> mm. From the hardware, I personally would definitely recommend if you have the extra $200 for both the larger SSD of 512, and the RAM of 16 gigabyte to upgrade because then your MacBook is going to last you a lot longer. On the other hand, since it's the entry model and they're not going to update this probably for another year, you probably have a very easy time to reselling this MacBook and get quite a bit of the money back. For me, I'm pretty sure for most people it's enough, even if you just use it for a side project, because if you just if you're learning iOS development and this machine, I'm pretty sure you're going to get very far with it. Once you start working in a company, they will provide you with a much better computer anyway that fits their system and what they want to have. Maybe if you want to freelance at some point, you need to, you might consider upgrading. I'm just not sure if it's worth it to spend from your own money to upgrade to maybe even the higher end models. Compared to a $1,000 computer, it's pretty amazing that you get everything in this small machines on this very base model. In case you were able to test the M1 personally and you have a different opinion or recommendation, please share it in the comments also for the other people. I'm probably not going to make a lot of product reviews because this is not, I'm not really interested in computers. I mean, not building them, I just want to use them. So. That's why I try to make this review more on the side of how does it feel to have it and to work with it. If you found it helpful, please give this video a like. Until next time, happy coding.
Ja. Okay, Louis, pay attention. Look in the camera. Look in the camera. Guck sie da, Hase, guck sie da. <laughs> And we're going to talk, I'm going to talk about the MacBook Air M1. And 100, 256. <laughs> I have the video, Louis uh, stealing the show. Mm-hmm.